Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hey, it's great to see you all. Uh, John and I are here today with one of our favorite people, Michelle Fabrica. Oh, I love connection. How are you doing, yeah. Michelle? <laughs> I'm good. Good to be here with you both. Michelle, it's always wonderful to have you. And uh, what's, the, what's the topic today? Because oh, you are... John, John, wait, 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 wait. Let me lead into you, John, just a little bit, and then you lead into the topic. So now that people are traveling more, okay, <laughs> it's not just taking an overnight bag, but sometimes we take a lot of baggage with us. Ooh, that's good art. Tuck it away, John. Very, very good. So here's the question I've always had about emotional baggage. Do we all have it? I mean, I don't think I have any emotional baggage, but I probably do. Hmm. You want me to answer that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe I don't want you to answer. If you're having yeah. trouble with it, Michelle, I'll, I'll take a stab at it. No, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, it's great. So um, I, I would say yes. I mean, we all obviously have a history in our lives from other, you know, other relationships, the way we were raised, different things. And so, you know, we all have like baggage, I guess you could call it. But sometimes we have things that are heavy and that really hold us back and impact our ability to move forward in our lives, either, you know, professionally, work-wise, school-wise, uh, relationship-wise, right? Which is um, what I, I get excited about, relationships and love and things. So, so it's really interesting to notice what are the things we're bringing with us. And it's a great analogy because you think of somebody who's getting on a plane and they have their little wheelie bag and maybe a little backpack. And it's like they're in a light or fresh state to meet someone new or even to join, to meet with their existing partner who they might have known for years or decades, can they see this person fresh versus coming with like, you know, a whole trolley, um, lots of luggage and things spilling out and things can't quite fit. And it's just, you know, uh, yeah. So it, it, I love the analogy. I, I get the sense, Michelle, that uh, um what I, I'm used to only hearing the two words, emotional baggage, but there probably are other kinds of baggage. But I guess the, the first question I have is, um, does every, it, we're not all aware of the baggage that we bring with us to relationships, are we? I mean, for instance, I really don't think I have any, but I'm sure I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think that's really important. I think that is the key difference is what can, um, you know, sort of make or break how we, but basically our relationship with our baggage, how we handle it, what do we even know about it? Is it, is it hidden from us? But unfortunately, if it's hidden, it's probably, that means, you know, unconscious, self-conscious, or subconscious, excuse me. And we're, it's affecting us whether or not we realize it or not. So if it's behind the scenes, it's in the shadows, it's impacting us, even if we don't even realize it. So the first step really is to start noticing and bring to light and into our awareness. And sometimes it's not fun to look at, but it's it's worth looking at because if we can see it, we can work with it, we can, you know, uh, you know, soothe it, massage it, change it slightly, put it on the shelf, you know, whatever, we can, we can work with it better. Well, you know something, uh, Michelle, a lot of times we talk about new relationships and John and I are just, we're, we're these long-term marriages. I mean, we're anachronisms, uh, 40, 50 years. Uh, I'm well into over 50 years of marriage. And so the question is, uh, uh, I accept the fact that we all have emotional baggage of some kind. Uh, and as you say, it's hard to recognize. But let's say we're talking about the topic now. So John, John and I, we're in long-term relationships as opposed to a new relationship, which I think is a, almost a separate topic. How would people in longer-term relationships uh, begin to say, just, we don't think we have any, but to examine ourselves, is there some ways that we can examine ourselves to see uh, if we're bringing some emotional baggage that's damaging uh, or, or doesn't allow our relationship to be as good as it could be? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great focus. I like that. So, so I would say that anything, any beliefs or attitudes, stereotypes, fears, hurts, judgments, um, things that you expect your partner has to do or should be doing and maybe they're not or... Maybe there are ways that you related to each other in the past that don't really serve each other anymore. Um, obviously, you know, if you have children and, you know, when your children are young, the dynamic between the two of you 
kind of re needs to be re renegotiated at different stages. So it's kind of like, can we bring something new into our relationship? Can we see our partner differently? I think sometimes we tend to see our partners like, oh, they wouldn't be interested in this or, um, you know, that's not, I, I can't tell my partner that or they're not gonna wanna do this. And so we kind of make assumptions without checking them out, whether or not they're even true. And so I think that that, that key of like, um, almost like beginner's mind or beginner's eyes, like, can I see my partner fresh in this moment? And um, otherwise there's a structure that we have of them in our heads that they've already, they're already limited. They're boxed in by what we think about them. Yes. So, so actually, uh, it seems to me that, uh, and I, I, I speak for John and myself, is that uh, there's a refrain of a song, was it Bye Bye Birdie? Uh, we're perfect in almost every way. Okay, <laughs> it's just, it's a fact of life. We are, and we're charming. We've got so many good things going for us. Uh, if we wanted to determine what emotional baggage we have brought in that might be worthy of changing, don't we really need a third party are we really, after a long-term relationship, the wrong people to uncover this? And that's something dramatic happens where a wife finally says, you know what, this is really annoying me, and the next time I'm going to shoot you. I mean, <laughs> do, does it have to come to that, or uh, are we capable of uh, uncovering this ourselves? Well, I, I think it depends, right, obviously, and that's kind of a, I realize that's a lazy answer maybe, but it's true. Essentially, um, it, it depends on whether or not the willingness of the two people involved to talk about something different, something difficult perhaps, right? So um, sometimes it's about, gee, you know, when this happened, you know, a year ago, two months ago, whatever, 10 years ago, I realized I'm still hurt by something you said or did, you know, I mean, could be an affair, could be a flirtation and who knows, right? Or, or somebody didn't get back to someone in a timely manner, like on a business trip. I mean, there can be kind of a, old pain around something. And so when something new comes up, like maybe you're going to go traveling again, they might have this tightness come up around them. So it's about kind of clearing the air with your partner. Like, you know, is there something I've said or done that is still bothering you? And because if so, I, I'd love to, I'd love to talk about it. Maybe we can put it to rest in some way, or I could help you, you know, talk through it or something. And, and similar, you know, kind of have a, a dialogue around that. Michelle, uh, for me, this conversation, uh, and I may be a little off here, but for me, this conversation is kind of defining what emotional balance, uh, I mean, emotional uh, baggage is. And uh, it just crossed my mind that uh, besides the fact you can have emotional baggage in any relationship, a business relationship, uh, child-parent uh, relationship, um, it crossed my mind that, uh, and uh, here's the question, is how... Um, how profound is emotional baggage? Can you have emotional baggage about, gee, honey, you know, you've been brushing your teeth sideways for 10 years and I'm really, it's really making me angry and I'm finally going to say it. Is that, does that rise to the level of emotional baggage, the little things the little, that bother people? Yeah, annoying things. Yeah, um, I don't know if that's emotional baggage or not. Yeah, I don't know if that's in the definite. I mean, I don't know who defines these things, right? I mean, it's it's all over the place. But I do think those are the kinds of things that I mean, like there's something that uh, my partner Dave does in the way he uses his electric toothbrush. And to me, he uses electric toothbrush. This is so minor, but he uses like a regular toothbrush. So he's moving it around his mouth. I'm like, the toothbrush does the job, you know, without you. Move so anyway, it's just interesting. I regularly notice that annoyance come up. Or he's pressing too hard. There's another one. Anyway, so it's kind of like, oh, wow, there is me, you know, wow, I want to control him. I'm concerned about his teeth. Da, 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 da. So, so, you know, I've kind of like wrestled those thoughts in my mind to the point where, you know, most of the time I don't say anything anymore, which is great. I mean, he's spared from hearing this mess, <laughs> messiness in my mind, but it's still there, you know? So it's kind of like, I wouldn't call that, like, it's not something that we grate on each other regularly. Yeah. But if there was something else that's in your relationship that, um, or anybody's really, you know, I mean, we're talking about you necessarily here, but if there's something that is just like a regular conflict, or, you know, whenever, you know, your cousin comes to town, it's like, he loves to go drinking, let's say, or what, it's like, oh, great, they're going to go. And it's just like, I don't like, you know, what is it about what happened in the past 
what is currently happening? Can we talk about some parameters about how, you know, in this example that I just made up, how can I feel more comfortable when your yeah. cousin comes to town? You know, yeah. it's those kinds of things to, you know, to basically, if we know our own sensitivities about certain situations or people, mm -hmm. then we can ask for the support we need from our partner or we can, you know, avoid sidestep something that is going to come up. Oh, that woman, she's going to come over. I know you think she's really attractive. Um, can you like make sure you spend some, you know, att attend to me a little bit when we're at the party or, or when she comes over? You know, those kinds of things. I mean, they can be really small, but it's just, it's sort of, you know, being vulnerable to our partners about some extra care we might need. Yeah. Now on the, on the other extreme, it seems to me that the important uh, baggage, the baggage that most needs dealing with, are those issues that you have that instead of let's because we're dealing we're, we're talking about dealing with uh, emotional issues between partners you know between relationships and you you can you can have baggage that is so heavy and it's so old you don't know where it comes from but you start applying it to new relationships people you haven't even don't even know yet and you start bringing all this stuff with you to the rest of your life. And it seems to me that's the that's the dangerous stuff. That's the danger, the important, the heaviest baggage there is. I would agree with you there, yeah. Because it really is going to stop us from being open to a new experience with someone and or, you know, intimacy and even growth, right? Our own personal growth. Because if we're blind and we're looking through a lens of like, well, they better not do this, they better not do that. And if they do this and oh my God, they might. And it's yeah. just, then we're not really available to be yeah. with this well, person. I, and, I would have to say there's just, there's so much more that we could talk about here that uh, I don't think we're going to get it through all, all through this one session. Um, <laughs> because it's, it's rec right. recognizing a, that we or other people have emotional baggage and perhaps we're recognizing just as importantly for another topic, somebody, in our relationship that has bringing emotional baggage, how we might bring it to their attention to let them know about something. So let's say that for this chapter, the biggest takeaway I've gotten so far is, Dave, either stop brushing your teeth or <laughs> learn how to pray because you're driving Michelle nuts. <laughs> so uh, I think we should all agree that uh, this topic probably has other uh, tentacles that we should probably explore. To sure. How, oh boy, does it ever. It, it's, it, it's if yeah, we yeah. have it, if somebody else has it, uh, how to recognize it and uh, then what to do about it. So <clears throat> I would say uh, if, you're, if you're game, let's come back and talk about uh, this and its different uh, facets. Good idea. And I'm, my big question for the future will be, if we have emotional baggage, can we find a porter? To help carry it. <laughs> well, that's what a coach and counselor can be, right? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. That sounds yeah. like a yeah. chapter of a book. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to add one more thing because I'd like to end on a more positive note. But I think that it's there's something wrong with it, per se. Like, it's to be expected. I, I, I like to remind people that they are whole and complete just as they are. And what we're saying here is that if it's getting in the way of you having the life, the love that you want, then it's something to address. But it, you know, we all have some things and it's fine. Like, so I don't like, I don't want it to be heavy in that way. I want it to be like, it's, it can be managed. It can be light. The load can be lightened. You can start noticing these things, but just to kind of realize that it's, if it if it needs if it needs your attention, you'll know. I think because people will you know be moving away from you or they won't be able to stay. Whatever. So it's just something to um, be aware of. Yeah. Well, yeah. great. Well, on that note, what I'm going to say is that uh, I uh, while we were off screen watching you, uh, I just put in a call to the bellhop uh, to bring in two carts with John's <laughs> emotional baggage uh, because he's going to get a hernia. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. They they are going to need the dolly. You know, put the, like the old movies. They put bag on top of bag on top of bag. Anyway, Michelle, this has been great because uh, now I know I've probably got some emotional baggage. I got to go search for it. I usually store it in the attic, uh, but 
It'll come, Thank it'll, you, Michelle. It may be in on the next flight, John. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's great to be here Good. with you. I look forward to seeing you again and talking sometime in the future more about uh, what we can do with our emotional baggage. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.